In this video, I will tell you if aggressive fat loss is more superior than moderate rates of fat loss and what the latest science says. Aggressive fat loss will allow you to lose fat faster and also allow you to get back to gaining muscle quicker. Individuals that hold more body fat have less risk of losing muscle mass compared to individuals that are a lot leaner. More fat equals more energy. If we look at a study by Garth et al, we can see that there was an increase in lean body mass in a slow weight loss group. However, no significant difference in a fast weight loss group. So we know that a large energy deficit leads to greater fat loss. But what about muscle loss? Looking at the vast majority of research, there seems to be five key components of keeping your muscle mass. Protein dose per meal, protein quality, protein timing, daily protein intake, and of course, the biggest component, resistance training. So based on a vast majority of research, I'd recommend consuming four to five meals per day, at least 30 to 40 grams protein each with high quality sources of protein like meats. I would also recommend a high protein meal soon after your resistance training and also pre-sleep. Also keeping on a high side of a daily protein intake of about 2.4 grams per kilogram. So if you look at a very well constructed study by Longland et al, we can see that the high protein group increased lean body mass and lost more fat mass. Keeping in mind, both groups were also in a 40% energy deficit. If you're really, really worried about losing muscle mass on an aggressive diet, I recommend that you diet for maybe a few weeks, let's say two to four weeks, and then hit a maintenance and then hit it again. Alternatively, the leaner you get, the more you can tape your deficit and make it smaller over a period of time. Just keep in mind that regaining lost muscle is a lot easier than building new muscle tissue in the first place. When it comes to resistance training, I really recommend that you reduce your volume slightly compared to when you was bulking. Now, the reason being for this is because you have less calories and less carbohydrates which means your performance and your recovery is going to suffer. However, when you increase carbohydrates after your aggressive diet, performance will renormalize. Before we get into the most important part of this video, I have to mention that cardio is definitely not necessary when you're going through an aggressive fat loss phase. It's often claimed that people that lose this weight really, really fast will gain all of it back again. This is not exactly accurate because even though they did gain some weight, you need to understand that they did lose more weight in the first place compared to their starting point. There was a very, very well constructed study done on minimizing adaptive thermogenesis. They found that the group that did two weeks dieting and then two weeks going to energy balance lost more fat without greater losses of a fat free mass. Now, what should you do if you overshoot your predicted maintenance? And the reason I say this is because obviously your maintenance when you first start the diet, it's gonna be different from where you end the diet because you're a lot smaller, burning fewer calories, your knee is all of a sudden dropped and many other factors. You need to understand that you will most likely be very glycogen depleted and also very insulin sensitive. Now, when you come out this dieting, aggressive dieting phase, that small surplus, if you overshot your maintenance, is gonna be used to replenish muscle glycogen, not necessarily stored as body fat. Binging off an aggressive diet is very, very popular. Now, here's how to prevent it. Focus on food palatability and consume more low energy dense food. For example, if you had chicken, broccoli and sweet potatoes, maybe just have more of that instead of a pizza. So if you wanna go on an aggressive diet, here's how to work out the calculation. Divide your body fat percentage by these multipliers. For example, if I'm 10% body fat and I wanna go for the middle of the road approach, not the extreme and not the very conservative approach, I would do 10 divided by 15. This gives me 0.6% and my average weight loss that I will be looking at per week is 0.6%. If you would like to know how many times a week you should be working out to build muscle and the most optimal frequency, click the card somewhere here or here and that will take you to that video. Stay positive, stay smiling and I'll see you in the next one.